we came to a point yesterday where we were asking whether it's possible at all to change the whole course of consciousness. This consciousness apparently, and if one observes it in oneself, is always functioning within a group, whether it's a sexual group, with all its pleasures and pains and all the rest of it, whether it is Rama, Sita, Krishna, Govinda and all the rest of it, then if, whether it is 2,000 years of Jesus Christ, that tradition, and the tradition that, which was sung 30, even in the 30s, that there must be permanent revolution by Trotsky, and he was butchered and put away. So the mind apparently in the brain, you must know more than I do, I only speak from my own observation of myself, not from books and philosophers, and I don't read any of those things. Apparently, it's the self-same song, if I may use that word without. Too much romanticism involved in it. And, and it seems that we can never get away from this narrow grooves which thought has set for itself. It has set this pattern moving, revolving, uh, going in movement of evolution, but it's the same pattern, more or less repeated. And we are asking whether the brain, please, sir, your biologist, so we can go into it, with the others who join too, perhaps, whether the brain, which has been so conditioned through millennia, which is forming patterns, living in patterns, changing the patterns, the changing of the patterns, revolution, and we won't go into all that, has been this evolutionary process, which is another groove, another pattern, like Rama, Sita, Christ, Buddha, mm -hmm. permanent revolution of Trotsky in the thirties and so on. Whether the brain, it's in itself, cannot undergo a fundamental revolution. You, uh, one has discussed this question with our scientists, brain specialists. They say there's a possibility of that. That the brain, which is so old, so has grew, evolved through millennia after millennia, seeking always security. Because it must have security. Whether in Rama, Sita, Govinda, or Christ, Buddha, or permanent revolution, it, it needs security. And Apparently, it has not found security, either in nationalism or in various forms of beliefs and theories and gods and all the rest of it. It has not found it, because it's still very confused, still groping, asking, searching, losing itself and begin again. This has been a constant process. And it, the brain itself has got tremendous energy. 
Most of tremendous energy. That is, technologically, the things that it has invented, thought, uh, the patterns of systems, the gods, the temples, the mosques, the church, created an extraordinary world in which there is exploitation. We don't have to go into all that. We have been, we spent all yesterday at it, we don't have to go into it. And we're asking whether it's possible for the brain, which contains all the past memories and experiences, whether that brain, the very cells themselves, can be mutated, transformed. Otherwise, we'll keep on repeating the same pattern. Ambition, power, competition. As you pointed out yesterday, the Eskimos never knew competition. The Americans brought it near. So, ambition, greed, envy, fear, sorrow. This is the pattern, apparently, that man has established and you're going on. And in this movement, he creates all the mess around him, socially, morally, exploiting, and all that. So, stating very briefly, not going to too many details, which we can a little later, if you wish, is it possible for the brain cells themselves to change? Not gradual process. The moment you admit gra gradation, you are again forming a pattern. I don't know quickly. Right, sir? So, the question is whether it's at all possible for the brain, with all the memories, genetic as well as inherited, acquired, this storehouse of enormous experience and knowledge. Can that be transformed? Then the problem is, what is the manner to bring this about? Is that all right, sir? The scientists, the brain specialists, like Freedom and others, you know, actually, have said that the whole content of the brain, which I also feel to be correct, because it's uh, what I'm seeing is not from books, not from professors, but observation in oneself, all the brain cells contain memory, all of it. There is no part which is not free from this. So what is one to do? Come here, sir. Plenty of room. Come on, sir. They occupy the throne. Sorry. If this is a problem, if this is the real crisis, you understand, sir? Not economic, social, moral. Mm, feeling the all like this is the real crisis. You may agree or you may not agree to this. We are capable, the brain is capable of inventing extraordinary things. Going to the moon. You no, know, I don't have to go to all that. Discovering new scientific things, 
what is matter, what is antimatter, and so on, so on. And also it has got extraordinary energy to go day after day, day after day, for six years to the office. Never, except for a month, having a holiday. That requires tremendous energy, which has become habit. Then there is that great energy expended in relationship, man, woman, wife and husband, the, the conflict between them, the divorce, the separation, the, the, the agony, and the escape from that agony into theories, into you know, all the rest of it. And also, a great deal of energy is expended in the battle of ideas. Your idea, my idea, your belief, my belief, my country, your country, and the enormous, brutal energy expended in wars. So, what shall we do? What is the difference between brain and mind? What's up? What is the difference between brain and mind? I think they are related to each other. They are interrelated. I'm using the brain in the sense that not only the memories, but mind, which is the sensations, sensory responses, nervous responses, uh, <coughs> desires, and the a great activity and energy that is required to think, to think, think, think. All that is the mind and the brain. I don't say I'm using the brain as something separate, but it, the whole thing is one. We have divided it, but the whole thing is a unit, a parcel, if you like to call it, a package, as the American. Sir, we have before us a problem and we are here together to discuss that problem. Whether there is any other approach to our problems than the traditional one. But uh, you often refer to thinking together without any reference to a subject or object. Sir, what is what do you mean by thinking oh. together without any reference to a subject or object? When we have come together, we discuss a problem before us. Is Sir, no yes, I understand. Here is a problem which I have posed in front of you. What is our approach to it? You understand my question, Sir? Yes. Uh, I have posed a problem. I put, a, put to you, I may be wrong, I may be stupid, I may be idiot and all the rest of it, but I have put a problem in front of you, which is whether the brain human mind can be transformed. Now, that is the problem. How do you approach the problem? So, one of the first things that occurs is to ask the question, can the brain find that answer within that brain? We'll go into it, sir. Just me. I understand the question. He asked that question. He said, and he said, what do you mean by thinking together? And I say, without object, subject, and all that. Thinking together about, about the problem, or investigating the problem. Together, thinking together into the whole question whether the brain cells can be transformed. Not I agree, you disagree, we say this is possible, that's not possible, but to find out together what to do. Would you, would the, or does all this sound crazy? So if we don't discuss with others, then in that case we will pose the question and decide 
I don't quite understand, sir. Sir, if there is a problem for us, before we can, uh, as to whether we can change our mind, or there can be a total mutation in our brain, if we don't S mind, sir, sir, is, it, it, sir, is this a problem or not? This is a problem. Really a problem. No, I mean, is this a biting problem? Of course not. It is no, problem. sir. Sir, you said this don't is Don't call me. You are the chairman, so you don't have to address no, me. Sir, you said, I want to say something because you said, you said this is the crux of the crisis, not the social, the political, or the moral. Can you, can you go into this a little bit and show how this is the crux of the crisis? It seems to us that... It seems Look here, sir, it's very simple. We are caught in a tradition. The Christians are caught in Jesus' tradition, or, you know, or tradition. Here we are caught in tradition, and 30 years ago they trust established permanent revolution, and we are repeating that. We are repeating Jesus, we are repeating God. Follow? Our brains, our minds are always functioning in a groove. That's so obvious. No? Sexual groove. You know, I don't have to repeat all this. And I'm... I think it would be more useful we go straight into that investigation. I'm, I'm, trying, I'm trying to do that. I'm suggesting to my friends also because uh, generally in such discussions we get sidetracked to the other uh, issues. Uh, to yes. uh, certain nuances. Yes, sir. So I think if you can directly go into the question. And we are doing that, sir. How shall we approach the problems? Let's make clear. The, the approach matters much more than the problem. <clears throat> right, sir? Would you agree? Just means to go slowly. If I approach the problem with a conclusion, I can't solve the problem. If I have deeply convinced beliefs tethered to an idea, a system, a principle, a, a conclusion, I can't solve the problem, because the problem then will be dictated by my prejudice. Right, sir? So it's important in investigation of this kind to find out how I approach the problem how one approaches the problem. Like any scientist, sir. Right, sir? He may have a hypothesis, but he says he puts it aside and looks through the microscope, whatever it does, and looks at the thing that is happening. So, if I may suggest, what is our approach? Ask. As a Hindu, as an anti-communist, pro-communist, uh, idealist, you follow a believer, non-believer, with all that burden, I approach a problem, generally. And uh, the problem remains. <coughs> so can I unburden all that? First, before I touch the problem, then I think that the only way out is just to leave the problem, just to approach the problem without any thinking at all. I know. I, so, <laughs> No, just a minute, don't use the word thinking yet, please, sir. Go slowly. Have I prejudices? This is the problem, and I, it's very important for me to find out how I approach it. I mean, if my beliefs are deeply rooted, 
well, belief in Christ, Buddha, or M M Marx, or in my own conclusions and my own knowledge, uh, my approach is very simple, which prevents the solution of the problem. Satisfy you, sir, if I say? Not satisfy. Satisfy yourself, sir. Uh, if I say that the approach should be totally objective. Yes, but are, are we doing that? Sometimes. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> are we doing it now, sir? Yeah. In the dissolution, in the understanding, <coughs> in comprehending or finding out whether the brain, the mind, consciousness, with all its content, fear, exploitation, action, you know, the whole of it. How do I approach it? Do I approach it as a biologist? Do I approach it as a, as a specialist <coughs> in some kind or other? as a bureaucrat or a religious maniac with all the inanities of so-called religion? How do I come to it, sir? That's the first question I would ask myself, because I'm not interested in the problem now. I'm only interested, concerned <coughs> to find out how I look at the problem. Do you mean to say, sir? That before we approach the problem, we must be free completely of our prejudices for or against. Wouldn't you, sir? <coughs> huh? yes. Would you please explain, sir, no, what the issue in, in this approach? What do we mean by approach? <coughs> if I love somebody, woman or man, do I approach sexually? With a motive, I'm going to have comfort. Somebody will be there to cook, bear my children, convenience, comfort, companionship. So if I approach her or him with a motive, I know how, how it'll end up. Separation, quarrels. And that's called love. So I must be careful. Approaching, what's my motive? Is? If my motive is ten different things, obviously I have no relationship with her. In the same way, if I have lots of motives. The problem remains. Right, sir? So can I put aside my prejudice, my conclusion, my hope, my desire? You follow, sir? Put it aside and look. <coughs> Huh? Look at what? Look at the problem first. The problem, the problem being the brain, mind, we'll use mind, is always seeking security hmm? in beliefs, in doctrines, in action, in theories, and always searching for certainty. So I believe in Christ. I believe in this theory. So it's always wanting security. Like a baby, like a child, wanting security. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. We're just stating facts. In my relationship with my wife or husband, I want security. Because security means Safety, permanent relationship. 
which is I go to the registrar, or the Indian ceremony, or Catholic ceremony, and I'm married. And it gives me a sense of security. And the tradition gives me security. But this modern tradition, scientific tradition, or the tradition which has been handed down for a thousand years. So you started with the question, okay, is it possible for there to be a total change in the substance of the mind itself? Then you said, the answer to that is not important, but the approach is important. At least it seems to me, I mean, it's so obvious. I may be wrong, but correct. You're a biologist, there's a scientist, there are other people here who say, look, what the, what the Dickens are you talking about? Well, you say approach is more important than the problem itself. We can discuss it, have a dialogue, not discussion, have a dialogue about it. What you are saying, I think there can be no opinion on that, uh, that one should look at the problem in total objectivity. Total freedom, sir, from the... Total freedom. The, that's, with a, you understand, sir, you mean, scientist does it if he's worth his salt. Uh, there can be no true opinion on that, I think. That's right. Right. But I, at least personally, uh, feel that you go ahead a bit further to demonstrate to us... Uh, <laughs> no, 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 what I mean, uh, let me feel. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, if you look at a problem, in total objectivity, uh, how does this transformation of brain cells? I'm going to take? go into that, sir. So, unless you go further ahead I'm and describe it, I think. No, I in think this one must first question. I don't think <coughs> one can take it so easy, simply that one can uh, observe with a sir, total this objective. Is such a difficult. I, my anxiety is this about the question of objectivity. Now, one, in one minute, we know enough, and we are like, let, let me finish. Uh, but what that is very precious and special at least, that uh, Krishnaji is posing before us, I think we should devote more attention and time to that, because I have seen in, in, in similar seminars also, we, are, we get stuck up with these preliminaries, on which there can be, at least for the time being, an agreement. Otherwise, what will happen? The time will run out and we will never get the precious thing. But, uh, forgive me for one and all I'm saying. I'm not trying to argue, but what is it to be a, an agreement that there is an objectivity of looking? Is there objectivity of looking? Well, madam, I give up. You take this. So either there is objectivity of looking, then one can pr proceed further. But why, how can you take it so easily for? Granted, the Are you suggesting that objectivity is not attainable? I am going into the nature of objectivity in, in perception. Please bear with me. I am going into the nature of objectivity in perception. What is, how is it, how can I say, is it possible? I inquire, I ask this to is it possible for there to be a <coughs> total freedom Sir, of all conditioning in person? No, I'm just asking a very simple question, if I may. Can I look at my wife or husband without, without all the burden of knowledge which I have had for the last 20 years? That is the problem, sir, not in the brain. It begins there. She has hurt me, she has flattered me, she has said the unkind things, there's sexual memories, and with that burden, with that image, with that picture and memories, can I look at her? As though I was looking at her for the first time.
if I can't do that, <laughs> you follow, sir, I can't do the other. Then it becomes mere theory and nonsense. But what do you say, sir, biologist? <coughs> You see, sir, we don't start near, <laughs> right? Near being here. I am the universe. I am, uh, and this is poetic. My world is my wife, my husband, my work, my children, and my world is in that there is exploitation. The poor, the rich, the whole business in there. If I can't understand that, how can I understand much more complex problem like brain? You understand what I'm saying? We are we avoiding this and jumping into that? My wife has hurt me. That hurt is deeply rooted. Right, sir? And I carry that for the rest of my <coughs> life. And I say it's not important. That's personal, that's irrelevant. But I'm concerned with the exploitation, concerned with the universe, concerned with this. I have to begin at home, not with the universe. Well, sirs, I don't know what you do. If I do, I'm escaping from myself. I'm reminded of a, a conversation between two people where someone says, tell me about the mind, and the other person says, doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. and he's asked, what is matter? He says, never mind. <laughs> no, it, it seems to me that uh, maybe uh, useful to uh, think about the methodology of, of doing a transformation, as you suggest. I, sir, that's, I'll go into it, sir, but yes. first I must be very clear that I am approaching with a, with a motive or with a motive, whether I am escaping from my own problems and therefore casting a shadow on my observation, whether I have a principle, a belief, you follow? All that is casting shadows, deep and shallow shadows, on the thing which I am observing. Therefore, I must clear that up first. Sir, the belief Word, the methodology, I don't know if you may object to that word, but obviously the methodology of dealing with the problem of my husband, my child, anything deeply connected with me, fear, anything deeply connected with me, the methodology is the, is the same methodology with which you tackle the problem of That's life. right. That's right. You, unless this methodology is understood, that can never be perceived. May I say something, sir? Yes, sir, please don't ask me. You're all, we're all in the same boat. Um, <clears throat> I want to express an anxiety here, an anxiety which I feel. Uh, one, I don't know if it is relevant to say it at this stage, but still. Say a few people are able to do that. Uh, if, if, if a few people are able to do this, and the world <coughs> still goes on as it is, the pressure of the world is still there on you, and uh, can it be kept at all? This is number one. Two, say I am a perpetrator of evil, maybe you know, I can stop it, but if somebody is doing evil to me, as it happens in the world, you know, if I am at the receiving end, I am jobless and 
people are hurting me. Would I be ready to take, undertake this process? I mean, would I, would I even find a, a desire to undertake this process? <laughs> and I have to postpone until things are, I mean, I may not do it at all. Of course. Because I'm so preoccupied with just fighting against the things, you know, which are. So this seems to me to be the, the yes, problem. Yes, sir, I agree. <clears throat> but we have left, right? Whether I'm occupied with my jobs, with my this or that, I have leisure. Some the word leisure, I won't go for that, etymologically. School the word school comes from the word leisure, from Greek, Latin, so on. And we have leisure. During that leisure, which we have now, can't we do this? <clears throat> not I you follow me. When you go home, not you say I'm not on personal leg. When you go home, there's leisure. And use that. Whether you're occupied 15 hours a day or whatever it is, in factory or in, in the garden, field or whatever it is, who can have leisure, any amount. So what should we do, sir? The urgency may not be that. That's what I said. Sir. That's all, sir. For a number that, of people. That's all, sir. Yes, sir. I didn't hear. That's all. We, have, we don't feel the urgency. The scientist does, because he depends his ambition, hmm? money, position, uh, rewards, Nobel Prize and this prize, that prize. You follow? That makes him drive. He's at it all day. So that's why I say, sir. Do we begin near or far? <laughs> Sir, is this urgency felt? All levels, all the result of a crisis, or can it be felt? You know, this urgency is it felt as a result of a crisis, or Sir, the house is burning. Look, I mean, the world is in a mess. You may not agree, you may have a theory how the world should be uh, changed. You might say, well, do this system, put the fire out. We talk about the fire is burning. We talk about non-exploitation, and we are exploiting. Sir, if you say this to the exploiter, it means one thing. If you say this to the exploited, the exploited are preoccupied in see that the exploitation stops, and hence they may not feel this urgency for the mutation of... So what shall we do, sir? So isn't, isn't it? I'm not saying it as a problem, but as a statement of fact. Yeah, see, but I think the whole thing... In this is how it is, not how it should be. Or. No, I think the whole thing hinges on whether this is an intellectual urgency... Quite right, sir. ...or whether this is something, you know, visceral, if you like. Yeah. Uh, you know, which you feel in your waters, they say. No, no, my problem was... No, no, you are not the exploited, are you? You and I are not the exploited. You can't say that. Uh, no, no, I can say that. Sir, I can say that. Because I have enough leisure, enough security, to spend two working days coming and talking about it. Now, if I was truly exploited, if I didn't know where my next meal was going to come from, I wouldn't have the time for this. I don't quite see that. No, please take it as a fact, sir, that I, I do know where my next meal is coming from. I'm telling you only about myself. No. I presume this is true. You must be kind for everybody. I can also tell about myself. No, no, I'm talking about ourselves here. Ah, come to that. We are all here, presumably, after having had good breakfasts. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so we're not, we're not in a state where I, hunger is our biggest I problem. Didn't, I didn't. Go on. <laughs> <laughs>
You see, sir, so you shouldn't, you can't object to people calling an exception. <laughs> so let, if we've come here presumably out of a certain sense of urgency. Now, if we say, now if I talk about this to the exploited, who doesn't have a, a piece of cloth over his body, then he won't listen. I think that's irrelevant for the no, moment. I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying is, if this is true, how slow this is going to be because a large number of people may not even have the leisure to... So what should we do? Just for this invitation, so their whole time is spent in... Okay, I agree with you. Coping with you. I, I'm with you. I'm not saying you know, that you. I should go and tell him. No, 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 I'm with you. I'm with you. But uh, my question is this. Let's assume that only 10% of the population has the comfort and the leisure. You know, just this talk of familiar numbers. What I'm saying is that from 0 to 10%, yeah, I'm, you know, I have no problem. Sir, sir, why don't you? I have no problem with that, but sir, why I post it as a, a situation sir, in Mr. which we all find ourselves. Professor, why don't we reduce it even further and say that the validity of a proposition has first to be tested on myself. Therefore, I am the whole world because I am the guinea pig on which the whole world is experimenting. And I am willing to be that. I am willing to say that if I have the urgency, then I am that. As far as the entire human race is concerned, it is operating through me. Therefore, the urgency in my case is not deviated by any diversion as to whether it is applicable to mass, whether, because unless the basic proposition itself stands vindicated, we have no ground for any further elucidation of it. Therefore, I, my submission <coughs> is, we should go into what Krishnaji is saying, uh, only as directly applicable to our own psyche. And so we can start with the assumption that we have the time now. Yes. Exactly. Right. That's all. So that's, and that's what he said. Don't have the time now. That's what uh, I, I know. We are nearly for 20 past 10. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, if I may ask, is it a, to use a rather crude word, is it a gut urgency or an, an urgency up here? <laughs> An intellectual urgency or an urgency from the very depth of your. <laughs> it may, if that is so, can we proceed from there? Yeah. You can say what you like. If the, if the urgency is a gut urgency, there is no question of putting aside my views. My? Mm -hmm. You, sir, mentioned earlier um, that <coughs> can I put in 20 years of um, uh, the past, can I, in relating to you or to anybody else, <coughs> can I forget about all of the things that has happened, that has taken place? Can I put aside all memories? And can you, can I then relate to a person at a situation just as it is? And the answer is that if it is an intellectual thing, I can play this game. Yes. I will put it aside. We are all scientists. I mean, I heard about Dr. Sarafai's comment yesterday about um, how he reacts to things. In science, what we do is everything that has taken place up to the present time is in fact taken as a hypothesis. Hypothesis, right. All the observations, all the theories are taken as a single hypothesis and then you ask the person, does it work or does it not? There is no question of putting that aside. If somebody comes up and comes up with the theory of the universe and stops me just as I'm going now saying that, you see, I don't really believe the theory of relativity, Newton's equations. I have really a new theory. I'm not likely to pay very much attention because in some sense, one takes into account the past. On the other hand, that does not at any time prevent you from making a new step with the right. Putting something aside is a luxury that is possible only when you have some other aside and there is somebody to put it aside. 
No, if sir. you are totally, completely involved in it, that's all I'm asking. There sir. is no question of putting. No, it. are we involved in it? That's all my point. Am I involved completely in the resolution of this problem? <coughs> To be completely committed to it means all this. I recognize that I cannot become committed without if I have all this. So I put I put aside there's a phrase which implies I, it doesn't matter. It doesn't it doesn't enter into my observation. That's all. So what you said uh, is uh, hasn't it to be qualified by the fact that the word belief in science is not uh, a very safe thing to uh, enunciate. It's usually uh, the, the fact that the scientific truth is an approximation to the, to, to the truth. And what Krishnaji was saying about believing in uh, and carrying the burden of belief, unquestioned belief. Is, a, is probably a, a problem worth tackling. Well, and that's why I mentioned the question of methodology, that there, there may be things like belief in court, which may, one may have to simply examine and ask that these are really worth banking one's life on. It may not be tested. Sir, could I say, I don't know how to what to do about this problem. I really don't know. Could we start with that? Yes. But I personally, uh, yes, I, 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 would, I would imagine that it may be a very interesting uh, path to ask whether really uh, believe, when one says I believe in something, is that really a, uh, a good thing to do or a wise thing to do? I would guess not, probably. Uh, well, uh, Reminded of the story that uh, the late Professor Heisenberg once told me. It seems Heisenberg as a young man had gone to Berlin. And uh, this was in the mid 1920s when Martin Terry was in the office. And he had decided that most of our problems in physics at that time came about because of the fact that one introduced unobservable things in physics. I mean, like electrons, orbits, and their transitions, and so on. So Heisenberg attempted to reconstruct a whole new class of theories from only observables, intensities and frequencies of spectral lines and things like that. And he gave a seminar that was applauded, young man, right young fellow. And uh, Einstein was in the audience and he said, uh, I was very impressed with the talk, but would you please honor me by coming to my apartment and I would like to talk to you further. And apparently at the apartment Einstein told him, that you did say that you would like to make your theory entirely of the of conditions. That is the only statement I found exception to. Because in fact, it is not the theories that being made up out of observations. Because without theories, you have no observations. And uh, Heisenberg was so taken aback by this turnaround that he thought deeply about it in the principle of indeterminacy. Heisenberg uncertainty principle came out from this particular consideration. So it seems to me that uh, there are, in fact, no ways of observation or function without having some theory. All theories are in flux, but there have to be some working hypothesis. To say I am in crisis, to say that uh, I have made progress, <coughs> to say I have not made progress, all of it contains so some that, It's not a theory, sir. When my wife, wife hurts me, it's not a theory, it's a fact. When I see as a fact, war, there's no theory about it. When I see exploitation, there's no theory about it. And I say to myself, if I am not clear in myself, Thinking having theories have no meaning with regard to the transformation of the mind. That's what I'm talking, not about science and all the rest of it.
So can we proceed, sir, a little bit? Yes, sir. We'll come down, sir, then oh. to, the, to the whole problem of obs observ observation. Yes. And, and its nature, because unless we can go into the nature of observation, I don't think any further... Pupuji, can I observe the tree, the you, the mountain, the river and the things that are going on in the world without naming it first? You follow so Just to observe, not naming it. Naming means associating all the rest of it. Can I look at my wife without association? You understand what I'm saying, sir? That's an art I have to learn before I talk to this question. <coughs> and I can learn it instantly if I want to. If it is my gut responsibility, the urgency is there, then I, say, I can do it instantly. But if you say, well, explain to me, talk, let's discuss it, we're off. <coughs> to me, this is the most central issue for me, which is, I know all the peripheral causes, I know all that, I'm, I'm 85, I've watched it all. So I say to myself, is it possible to change this central thing which is creating all this? So I may have marvelous scientists, but I'm ambitious, competitive. I've talked to many scientists. They are terribly competitive. That man gets the Nobel Prize. My God, why didn't I get him? <laughs> Jealousies, the quarrels, the, the machinery of intrigue. Oh, sir, I don't have to tell you all this. So I say, how will man change? He knows the house is burned, eternally theorizing who burned the house, what's the cause of it, never saying, let's put it out. The metaphor then. So I say to myself, my brain is the result of a million years. So it is not my brain. So I start with a sense of great humility when I say that. I don't know if you understand. It's great, great humility because my brain is not mine. Because it's the it has evolved through time, centuries, and that brain, that mind, has accumulated tremendous experience, sorrows, fears, anxieties, competition, everything. And with that mind, I'm trying to change exploitation in the world. Right? With that mind, I'm creating a new structure. That structure is from the same old brain. So I said, unless this changes, that will be the same pattern repeated, only modified change. Instead of being black, it will be white, one day it will be red, and so on. So I say, can this brain, mind, undergo without any pressure from outside? Because, you understand, sir? Because the moment you have pressure on it, it's back into the old system. So, can this mind, without any pressure, without any motive, transform itself? You may say that's impossible. You're loony, you're idiotic. Maybe. I say it is possible. <coughs> Like Einstein, sir, you brought up, he 
got them theory, I would probably say, what nonsense had followed. They sneered, a few of them, but he went at it. If somebody came to you and sneered what you were doing, you wouldn't be affected because you, you went at it. Now, here, I'm not saying I'm Einstein or a marvellous man, I said, it can be done. Well, let's talk about it, go into it. But if, you, if, as you say, <coughs> the house is burning, there's one ally in this whole business, which is uh, the principle of natural selection. Huh? The principle of natural selection operating on, on life no, systems. Yes, yes. I would imagine that there could be two scenarios. The house may burn and man may be unfit to live on, on this planet. Maybe. In which case, natural selection will take care of it and eliminate those but, situations. Yes, sir. But I'm not going to wait no. till... I agree. No, no. So maybe the, the way is to buck natural selection and try to not let that happen. Is but no matter what, that will... the fire will be put out one way or the other. But I'm told that it is not always good to put out fires. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm told that the California forest, redwood forest, there used to be natural fires because uh, I mean, small trees would die, and that would uh, come up and eventually it would become very dry. Yes, sir, yes, sir. And the Forest Service decided that this was an undesirable thing to do. And so they used to clear all these things. And then after a few years they found that in fact they were interfering with the natural ecology of the place. Mm. Because the idea was that fire would burn and it would burn off the brush and the big redwood trees, which were very tall and very strong, they would survive. So that it sort of kept the place clean. But the forest tree department was interfering with this natural process to prevent. So you the wars. I want to talk a little callously about war. Yes, sir. Because uh, everyone takes such a non-violent passive. No, no, I'm not. <coughs> I took a walk this morning with Dr. Raman uh, in the grounds, and we were admiring how nice the garden is kept. And I noticed that a lot of grass was cut. Terrible thing. I mean, poor grass, it wasn't bothering anybody. The mango trees were not being deprived of anything, but the grass was cut. So, you Yes. Um, <laughs> the gardeners were working in cutting off the new shoots, poor things. I mean, they had resisted all attempts at uh, stopping their growth, but they are still hopefully putting forth new shoots. But, but they the cut are grass there. are they taking to their cows? But you know, the cows are happy. What I'm saying is that poor grass <coughs> is being deprived of things. When birds come and pick up the worms from the ground, we applaud them. I mean, we are very happy. Yes, the birds afterwards sing and we say how beautifully they sing. <coughs> And we say that you know they keep things under control. In fact, we interfere a whole lot with uh, with nature. And when somebody interferes with our lives, we say that oh, very careless. I mean, this should not be done. In fact, I I also feel that in some ways, natural selection involves considerable amount of destruction. So this is like the grass cutting the grass. Some grass, dry grass, takes over and kills the long grass. I don't want, if I have a son, to be killed by somebody, by the government as an army, or by you as somebody. I want my son to grow up happy. So, uh, let's come back to the problem, so and so all this. So, you, um, that's why I wanted to raise a question which you said. You said the crux of this whole matter is, can I look at a tree without naming it? Because in this whole process of naming seems to be the blockage to observing. Yes, which, yes. Now, is it a question of my ability to look at looking? At? Looking. I don't quite follow. Sorry, I must be in awe for a second. <laughs> Is it a question of my looking at looking? You see, you, you are asking that is it possible to look at a tree? No, I'll come nearer. 
Is it possible to look at my wife or husband without all the things I've accumulated about her? I can start this um, by saying the moment I identify as X, the name is there. The yes, yes, all that's implied, all that's implied. Now, the question is, can there be a looking without this process yes, of obviously, identification? Yes, obviously. Does that uh, involve <laughs> my looking at looking? No, no, going no, to no, no. Just you're so making it complicated. Of Just a minute. What does it involve? What is involved? Open. I have created an image about my wife, and she has created an image about me. Hurt, flattery, sex, pleasure, domination, possessiveness, identification, and all the things that relationship is involved. The, the image. Wait, wait, the image. Can't, can't one observe that image? That's, that's to keep it simple. Don't complicate it yet. Okay. First, observe. Huh? Yes, First one can observe. Yes, one no. can observe. Wait, that wait, wait, yes. wait. How do you observe it? As an outsider observing? Or the observer is the observed. The image is the observer. I mean, this is, you know, sir. I have created an image. No, not I. Thought has created this image during 50 years, 30 years, 10 days. And is the image different from me? No, sir. That's a legitimate question. Is that image different or something which has somebody created? Or that thing, that image is me? Right? Would you... Uh, no, not theoretically, actually. That image is me. So, the observer is the observed. Right? Now, what takes place then? You follow? The, before, there was the division as the observer and the observed. That is, uh, somebody is exploiting me. I am exploiting somebody else. The circle goes on. So, I, the observer, is the observed. Not an idea, but an actual fact of investigation. Of our, so, what happens when this sense of division has come to an end, the observer and the observed? The division is non-existent, therefore the observer is the observed. Then what takes place? You. We never come to that point. We are all arguing that for, when we do come to that point, what happens? What actually, I mean, that's what I wrote. What actually takes place is that energy which we have wasted in division, control, suppression, all the rest, that energy is, throws light on that. On that fact, observer is the observed. That which has created, that which is the problem, has dissolved. Like, sir, when under a microscope, when you put light on the thing, the thing itself changes. I may be scientifically wrong, don't let's enter into that field. So, I'm saying, we are wasting energy in conflict, in struggle, in opinions, all this that goes on. When all that energy is not wasted, that's wasted as the observer and the observed, quickly I'm putting it, then that energy explodes any issue that's there. 
have a right. I may be. It's like, sir, my wife or you have hurt me. Hmm? They're hurt. Abrala, who is hurt? The image I have about myself. You call me a fool or you flatter me the same thing, and that image is hurt. Then I say, my, then I say, I must remove that hurt or build a wall around myself, not to be hurt more, and so on, so on, so on, which gradually leads to isolation. You know. Now, the hurt is the image. The image is hurt. I am the image. So what happens? The image is not different from me, I am the image. That realization of that fact throws light, attention, <coughs> energy onto that fact, and that disappears. You follow? The hurt is completely gone. Or oh, the flattery, which is the same side, two sides of the same coin. <coughs> After this realization, uh, what kind of relationship exists then? What kind of relationship with my wife then? Wife or anything else? And I'm, I'm, I start with <laughs> what is my relationship with my wife or with anything else? So, may I tell you, will you do it? First, do it. And see, if I tell you that re that in that relationship, there is complete love. It means nothing. Then automatically the present structure in all fields, political, economic, social, cultural, will totally collapse. Is it not? I don't know. Totally can't collapse. It cannot okay. collapse up. No, no, we are misunderstanding. <coughs> what, Guru Chuji? I said it is better not to apply what we are thinking because it distracts. If you say. Sir, look, sir. Up to now, my wife and me are two entities. Right? Two, two different entities. Yes. The exploiter and the exploited. Two different entities. The government and me. War and me. And I say this division is the most destructive factor. Germans, Russians, the Pakistani and so on. So, where there is division, there must be conflict. That's law. And who creates this division? Me. Now, obviously, sir, because my wife and me, I begin there, nearest. That is, my wife has created an image about me and she has created about me. And this is called relationship. <coughs> I say that's not relationship, it's just two images at each other. So if I can, is it possible to remove the image? Now, who is the remover? No, the river, we think our tradition says, me is different from the image. But looking at it, going into it, I see, one sees the image is me. Right? So what happens? 
when there is the realization that the me, that there is only image. Now, when I bring complete attention to that, the image totally disappears, not to be manufactured again. Then what is my relationship to my wife? You understand? She has got the image, and suppose I haven't got the image. What's our relationship? She has no image or has... No, 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 no. no. That is a crucial point I want to... I am telling you, I'm going to it, a little bit, going to it. She, she, she's my wife. Up to now we have been divided. Image, image. And these images have kept us apart. These images have been the cause of jealousy, anxiety, fear, possessiveness and abomination, all that abomination that goes into relationships. Now, when there is the realization that the, that the image maker is the image, is himself the image, and if you bring your complete attention to that, the image making ends. Now it went. Then what is my relationship? She has got an image about me, and I haven't. What happens? Going to see obviously what happens. May I say, sir? Yes, I sir. Think, I think I become defunct. What? Defunct. 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 I. I don't understand. That. Defunct. Huh? D E F U L C T. Defunct. Yeah. What does that mean? I, I have no action. Oh no. No, you see, you haven't done it, son. You make theories about it. If that is the question, Prashadji. I'm, I'm not, sir, I'm not being rude or anything. No, no, no. I, even if you are rude, I don't mind it. But I only want to understand. See, that's no. my anxiety. Sir, have I, have I realized first that there are two entities, right? So up to that point, I quite follow you. Up I to understand. what point, sir? Uh, that part, when the image making ends, for all practical purposes, oh, no. in my relationship with the world, I end. No. A totally different relationship takes place. That's what I want to know about. Sir, I question whether the image-making machinery ends. I think image-making, you can see the functioning of image, you can see that the maker of the image is image himself, and then it can stop for a while. But that the machinery itself has stopped, I don't, I question that. Which means what? Machinery starts only when there is inattention. Yes. Right, sir? So I think we can take it as granted that from, except for one person here, for everyone else, uh, attention is at best momentary. Yes. Right, right. At momentary, and therefore the image continues. Continues. Yes. yes. Now, wait a minute. Can you give all your energy to the understanding of this whole machinery, the image making, and the image maker, and see that the image maker is the image, you follow? The observer is the observer. Can you give all your attention to that? Which means no theories, just attention. To attend means to give all your capacity, energy, sense, everything to see that fact. So can I say something, sir? One of the theories Theory, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I, I'm... <sighs> okay. One of the thoughts, if you like, one of the words that come in, is the words of Krishnaji himself. What? The words of Krishnaji themselves... I know, I understand what... Well, it shouldn't, why should it? The fact is, my relationship with my wife as two entities, that has the division has created the mess. Yes. Whether it is division between the labour and the capital, socialists and worker, and all that yeah. division, like two nations fighting each other, is the same principle carried right through. 
this. And I say, I begin with my wife. If I can understand the deep principle, I've understood the division, the idea of division. So I say, can this division end? Right, sir? Yes, sir. And I say, it can end if you, if you do this, this, death, But you won't do it. Not that you should do it. Not that you should accept what I'm saying. I'm not your authority, I'm not your guru. Sir, should it end? Should it not end mutually? What? Is it enough if it ends in one person? Now, see what happens, sir, that's my point. You have no image and I have an image. Yes. What's our relationship? Go, go slowly, sir, what's our relationship? The other person may feel that this is another kind of bullying. <laughs> the other kind of? Bullying. 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 No, yes. yes, other person, this is another kind of thing. This is a subtle escape from me. Yes. Huh? In order to avoid down. in order to avoid sex, in order to avoid something or other. Or holier than thou. Huh? Or holier than thou. Oh yes, yes, all that kind of thing. She said, come back. <laughs> so what happens? Peter, come back. And you know you can't come back. You understand what I'm saying? Come back in the terms of division. Right? Right. Then what happens? Just follow it, sir, step by step. Either she says, what has happened to you? You don't love me anymore. You have become indifferent, you have become cruel, you have become cool, you don't want sex, you I want. You follow? She begins, or he begins, then what happens? I just said, look, lady, oh man, just calm down, let's talk about it, right? Right, sir? Let's talk about it to the wife or to the man. The man who has no image talks to the wife and says, look, I'm not running away. I'm not escaping. I've somehow managed not to be hurt anymore. Not that I've built a wall around myself. I'm not going to be hurt. But she's full of anger with me. What, what's my relationship? Oh, you're missing the thing, sir. No, I won't it, react. What, my, stick to it, sir. What's my relationship to her? Nothing. No! Okay. I said to you, I said to her, let's talk about it. I will hold her hand. I said, let's talk about it. Let's go into it. Listen to me. I don't want to hurt you. I really love you. But I have no image about you. What takes place, sir? Right, sir? You said, what is your theory about what happens after? What? What is your theory about what happens after? No theory. Are you talking about empirically? May, 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 may I ask it in a different way? What is the fact that you see after that? Fact Not is the theory. Compassion. Love. Does it get reciprocated? Or what? No, she hasn't. Pardon? I, the man who has no image, perhaps has compassion, yes. love, and she doesn't. Yes. Or she has, and he doesn't. It is there I want. Really, that is the only point on which I want an explanation from you, Krishna Ji. What is that compassion? Oh my God, what is love? Here. Sir, just a minute, sir. Find out, sir. Love is not identification. Love is not attachment. Love is not something that makes confusion in my relationship. She makes it, or he makes it. So I say to my wife, if I have no image, I say, lady, come and let's sit down. I'll talk to her. 
I'll hold her hand and tell her what it means to live a life without image, which means compassion. You say, what is that nature of compassion? I say, look, sir, begin not with compassion, caring for somebody. Caring, which means paying attention to somebody. Doesn't matter your cook, your husband, your your man who is at pay attention, care, look, uh, begin there. You see, sir, what our difficulty is? We don't do this ourselves. We won't go around it. Theories. Tell me what compassion is. Think of saying such a thing. Sorry, sir. That means we have never loved anybody. Right, sir? <coughs> we better stop, sir. We'll meet again this afternoon.